Hi, can I sit by you? Is this seat taken? Do you want to sit next to me? I do. Wow, I never have anybody really pretty like you who wants to sit next Aww. to me. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Are you ready to get this day going? I am. We have a lot to fill this day with. Oh my gosh. First up, serving. Mm -hmm. Let's go serve some kids. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on a couch for a keto on the couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. <sighs> this is like my first cup of coffee in, since before we went to Universal, so that's like, what, four days? I have not gone four days without coffee. I haven't made you coffee. Oh, you went to Mommy's yesterday. Yes, I went to Mom's yesterday, and... She makes really fantastic coffee. She does it on the stove. Oh, she, yeah, she uses the old-fashioned, like, percolator on the stove and stuff. I don't know if it's, like, the technique that makes it so magical or the fact that it's your mama pouring you the coffee. It's probably, a combination of all of it. Probably adds to it. My problem with those percolators, we even have one for the RV, and we stopped using it when we bought a regular, like, cheapo, you know, like, regular coffee machine unless we're, like, dry camping. Because every time I use one of those things, I get grounds in the coffee. Yeah. You know, it's just like it percolates and then you're drinking. You know, you know what she is? And it tastes like mud. You have to get the perfect amount of grounds in there. I was going to say she has really got that down. Mm -hmm. um, her ground game is awesome. Um, also, when it's like finishing up on the stove, she opens it up and puts a cinnamon stick down in it. Oh. And not only does the whole house smell like amazing when she does that, but it also, I mean, you taste it. If there is anything I miss about pre-keto, it is this time of the year and the smell of like fresh fall baked goods in the house, which is why we buy so much like Scentsy stuff yes. to try to duplicate that. Like synthetic and cinnamon when, buns. When I lived in New York, uh, my parent, we had a coal stove in our house growing up. So my dad, because you would have that coal stove going and you know it would get very, very dry. Mm -hmm. So we always had a pot of water on top of the coal stove and he always put like cinnamon sticks and things like that oh, in there how nice. so that as that water is boiling or simmering on top of the coal stove, it would put this smell like of cinnamon. Spices. In, yeah. And I, I, that's the one thing I miss. But fortunately, we, can do that. we do have cinnamon sticks that we can put on our stove or say. we can just use our Scentsy stuff and, and duplicate that without actually having apple pie that I'm going to want to devour the entire thing of. Right. I mean, we can have nice smells. I do need to try, when this is all over with beef, butter, bacon, and egg, that apple pie that Rhonda was talking about yes. in the video. Um, now, I'm going to link that video right up here. That's going to be coming out, I believe, tomorrow, but you're going to get a little preview of it if you're watching this right now and then click on that link that's up there. But she talked about using Chiotes? Chiote, mm -hmm. which turns out when I was looking for a picture for it, for that video, yeah. is not a fruit. I didn't think it was. The it's a squash. Yes. And the, the only reason why I know that I've never used it before in a recipe, but I used to work at Aldi. Mm -hmm. And so I know where we put it in the store and it was always, um, you know, in the gourd area i'm gonna have to look for that because now she was saying to take the chayote i'm gonna have to message her but she was saying take it peel it and peel it and it's gonna it's got the texture of an apple and then you add in all of your apple pie spices and then what she's saying is if you don't mind it you get the jolly rancher stuff for your drink the sugar-free stuff which probably has a little bit of maltodextrin but i'm okay with that for something like for a dessert for like thanksgiving or something pie, like that right I don't even want the pie. I'm just thinking the about filling. 
Yes. You, you never had like just where you'd go to the, oh, when we used to go to Cracker Barrel, right? And you get the little plate of apples. Yeah. So I'm really interested in trying that when beef butter bacon and egg is over because that would make a great fall pie for holidays. And it stuff really like would. That. And I'm going to push the pie button because you have a great crust recipe. Oh, yeah. That it's coconut. So good. We have a link for it. There, I'll leave a link down below. It's on our um, website. And it does. It is a really good buttery. Everything pie crust. tastes good inside of it. Yeah. So we have a really busy day, but it's going to be ending with a bunch of relaxing. Yeah, I'm excited about that. So first, we've got uh, three services at church. Mm -hmm. We've got editing for Keto on the Couch in yesterday's vlog. I'm halfway done with that. And then um, we uh, have to go to the Keys. Yeah. Now. Not have to, get to. No, we get to. We had a really long night, and in typical Rachel and Joe, consistently inconsistent, uh, we spent an hour and a half, almost two hours, packaging up so all exciting. of your travel mugs. Yep. And uh, I never turned the camera on. Like, we should have, why did we oh. not have the camera on pointing over I there with a time that. lapse of just everywhere all of these things and we just want to say thank you yes. to you guys for placing those orders we just we I love like the duh. fact i mean the fact that you guys want to have a mug that has 2kk that blesses us that, so much that means so much to us and it was amazing to see how many orders we had to fill and i do want to say now right now we have one nebula. As of the recording of this video, there is only one nebula left, which is the one that you see Rachel using right. all the time. Flip. We probably will place another order for those. But again, it's going to take at least a month to get that. Uh, so we do have the other colors. And I think we're going to be ordering some travel coffee mugs, kind of like your Contigo over yeah, there. Yeah, because I would like... This one's a little battle damaged. It used to be green. super, super <laughs> battle damaged. Uh, so I'm excited about that. But we just wanted to say thank you. Now we got to get all of those boxes over to the post office. Yay. So I think we're going to have Anthony do that for us because we're going to the Keys. And I'm so excited to finally get back into that RV. Me too. It'll be a lot of fun. We're going to be on the water. We're going to do some paddle boarding, some exploring. I'm really praying that the uh, the weather cooperates with us. But no matter what, we're going to have a good time. Yeah, we're going to be together. And we're going to continue on beef, butter, bacon, and egg while we're camping. Now, you're going to get going. I've still got to get in the shower and stuff. We'll check in with you guys. Like I said, I still have to pack up the RV. I have to hook up the RV. I got to put everything back in my car because Sam did such <gasps> so a phenomenal beautiful. job. If you are in the South Florida area and you need to get your car cleaned, Let message us. us. Yeah. Send me an email at Joe at Two Crazy Ketos and I will pass along Sam's information. Him and his family, no kidding, spent seven hours cleaning our cars. It was, it's. it looks like it just rolled out of the showroom. I'm, I mean, oh my gosh, How the job he did and he his family did, did. Your truck bed does not have one speck of dirt in it. Yeah. Not the cab, the bed. Yeah, there's not a piece of sand in there. I mean, it It, it just Gorgeous. looks phenomenal. And I was so, I mean, I, we were almost you wanna, crying. You wanna sell the car now. I felt like, are we taking advantage of them? No, because but they, they did such a great job, I but it's, it's somebody who took pride in their work, and I'm so glad That's exactly that we were right. able to bless them with being their very, very first clients. Well, because we kept going out like, oh, it's good. I'm sure it's, it's good like, enough. You know, because I, yeah, I feel, I feel like I don't, I don't want you to, and it's like, no, this is, this is me. This is the representation of me. I want to do it really well, and I, I admire that. He was even saying to me, now, if there's any problems, you call me, and I'll come fix it, and Anthony and I were talking. I'm like, yeah, I what have a problem? problem. You're undercharging yeah. for the work that you're delivering, yes. right? Seriously. Like half the price of any other like home car wash detail person with twice the excellence. Gorgeous. Look at this car. Like I don't even want to sit in it and, and mess it up. Yeah, I told Rachel, let's take some pictures of the car and see if we can help promote him for some of our local friends. And she's like, well, go take pictures. I'm like, it's still kind of dark out. You know, you're not going to mess it up that much. And I'm like, my my cat hair, my lint, 
things I pick up on my shoes. Like I, I, oh, this moment is like that driving out of the dealership moment that you're like, this is, this is the best this car will ever be. It really looks cleaner than the day we bought it. It does. I mean, look, look at this. There, there's not a speck of dirt, even inside of, you know, the side cup holders and things. I mean, look at this. What a job. It, it's just, it's impeccably clean. I am amazed. I don't think I have ever had a, a car this clean before because mom cars right they're usually the mom taxi so i went to hook up the rv and my pins my safety pins that hold the trailer hitch to the stinger on our truck uh, they're missing i don't know what happened to them we usually keep them in the stinger and they somehow fell out so until i get some more i'm gonna have to run to uh, harbor freight and see if i can find some kind of like pin or something all it does is it holds the arm from like possibly opening up so any kind of pin is going to uh, help i just have to hope i can find the right width one to fit in that hole perfect went to harbor freight and they had the exact thing that's missing only it's an assortment so i have a bunch of different sizes paid 20 bucks for this thing i think on the website i was going to pay like 25 to have two of them ship. So now I have a whole bunch of them. Now I can go home and hook up the trailer. Wow, I haven't lost my touch first time. So now comes the fun part. I need to dump the black tank. Since it's been parked here, we've used the bathroom and the shower in here a few times, so we need to dump the tank because there's no uh, sewer at the campsites that we're going to. So I'm gonna go ahead, pull it forward a little bit, and I have a place that I could dump it right here at the house. So I got home a little early so that I can hook up the rig and get everything ready. And what I'm thinking is, let me go ahead and get the grill going, cook up a few hamburgers for the trip, and then also start the Blackstone and just make up a whole mess of ground beef so that tonight we don't have to try to cook. When we get there, we can just park and relax for the evening. So Joe is so awesome. While I was away at church, he meal prepped for the trip. Uh, we have some boiled eggs ready to go. We've got some regular eggs. He browned up some beef for us to enjoy, some uh, hamburgers we could eat while on the road. We have some beef sticks and we have what's left of our mayonnaise. It's, it's pretty, you know, solid right now, but it will, you know, get softer during the trip. And we can even make some more while we're on the trip. Well, we're finally headed out. Like a herd of turtles. So we're on our way down to the Keys. A little bit late, but there's no pockets in these pants. No pockets. These, there's a malfunction with these shorts. So we're a little late, but we're gonna have a great time and we're gonna eat some burgers on the way. Hey, hottie. Hey. I'm headed camping down in the Keys. You wanna come with me? A to total stranger? Yes, I would. Like to just jump in your truck attached to a trailer. Let's go. So what are you eating? There's four burgers there. Yeah, four for me. What do you get? There's four half pound burgers there. Just kidding. So we're going to have some hamburger on the road. Yep. And we're going to have some pork rinds. They're plain. So I fired up the Little Joe barbecue Little and Joe. just uh, cooked the four hamburgers really quickly. We're going to eat those on the road. We got about a two hour and 45 minute trip. So we should get down there before they close and hopefully before it's too dark. So we are about halfway there. We had to stop and get gas. I forgot that we have to stop like every hundred miles, whatever, to get gas when you tow in the RV. 
and we're not getting as good of gas mileage as we even used to. I'm only getting like 7.8 miles per gallon. I'm not sure if there's an issue with the truck because it's been hesitating to start sometimes or if it's because there's a lot of wind. There is, it is very windy out there. It is extremely there. windy. So it could be that. So when we get back, we'll take the truck in. It's running. It just feels like, you know, I'm missing power. But if I'm going into a lot of wind, that definitely is going to affect it. So we're about... I want to say probably, I don't know, an hour and a half to two hours away. Uh, we had those burgers. Rachel's now saying she wants a steak. So maybe once we get there. No, I mean during the week. Oh, during the week. Or weekend. Because we do have a bunch of ground beef made up. I made I'm... a whole bunch of ground beef. But now a steak sounds really, really good. <laughs> uh -oh. But uh, yeah, I wonder what the steak prices are. Usually we come down here, we get seafood. And There's no, no seafood. seafood. That, not, not on this trip. It's not, And it's not easy. No. I mean, it's not easy to be like, we're in the Keys. I want seafood. I'm right. not going to lie. I right. want seafood. But we said we weren't going to. Yeah. So we're not going to. So we'll check in with you guys when we get down there. Rachel is going to preview Keto on the Couch so that hopefully everything goes well because I left my hard drive at home. Otherwise, we're going to have to try to download it or fix it like on the road. That would be really interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, you That's just did the for premiere it. for uh, episode 14. 14. 14 days in. Well, we're on day 15 now. Yeah. You feeling good? I'm feeling great. We should get there just in time for the blowing of the conch shells. And that's how we know we are finally in the conch republic. Looking at that water, I don't know how much paddle boarding we're going to get done. That is one of my favorite sounds in the whole world, though, is is just the sound of waves. Now, the good thing is, is we're like on the other side. So there's a chance that the island will kind of protect us and it won't be as rough. So we can launch the paddle board right out of the back of our rig. We will see. I'm going to be happy no matter what, because whether we can launch the paddle boats or not, we can at least listen to the waves, look at the water and relax. What are you I, smiling at? I may not go inside of this camper for the entire two nights that we're here. Look at this. It's like we have our own little beach. I'm going to just throw a bed spread down here and I plan on spending a lot of time right in our little backyard. So this is Bia Anda State Park. This is one of the best campsites. They have I think 12 of them on the water, but some of them are better than others. So this is probably the last of the best ones. Yeah. So if you look over this way, they're on the water, uh, but they're getting closer to the bridge, closer to the uh, road noise. They have all of those big rocks and everything. Whereas if you look for us, we have more of an open area. Yeah. Like I can just walk right on there. And then when you go that way, those have like a lot more beachfront and they're a little bit more towards the bay but this is like the last of the best spots and it just happened to open up we were supposed to be here but over around the corner not on the water and this opened up the only thing is, is i screwed up we were supposed to be here sunday to wednesday i got so excited when i saw <laughs> it and it was open for the entire week so we could have stayed till friday if we wanted uh -huh. to if i didn't have football games but i got so excited i booked it saturday to tuesday by accident and then of course we had to give back saturday because we had to be at church on sunday but at least we're going to get two nights here. So it's like one and a half days. We don't have to check out till one o'clock. And that's about when we're going to leave. Like <laughs> right at we're one o'clock. to kick us out. So we're going to go ahead and set up the rig. We just have to drop the stabilization jacks. And then uh, plug in the water, plug in the electric, and we'll be set to go. Well, it's been a while since we've been at this table. It really has. And I'm so glad to be back. And what a nice campsite. I mean, we were going camping every other week. And then summer happened and then we got sick and it's nice to be back and what a way to come back to be sitting at this campsite it's on the water i mean yeah. and, and it's just beautiful i was excited when i found the spot but like i said i got so excited that i booked the wrong days i don't know I, it was available all week I like, Ooh. and and i just i saw like and i was like oh yep i had three nights and i didn't realize that i had started it on saturday and I could have had it, but oh well. 
we're going to enjoy a couple of days here on the water. Just going to sit in the water. Hopefully it's not going to be really rough tomorrow and we can go out on the paddle boards. I'm very excited about that because it, it really has been a minute for that. Yeah. So, I mean, for a day that was like really busy, I'm pretty impressed with like our eating because I didn't even miss keto chow today. Normally, like last Sunday, I missed having the keto chow and like starting off our day with that and by the time we got to eating i was like ravenously hungry and just having those couple of burgers while we were driving like i was really good okay so here's another eating hang up okay. that we've had to deal with in the past on busy days it almost became like an excuse to to grab something that wasn't great Okay. Like, I'm very guilty of being like, I need to get something really quick, so I've got to go through the McDonald's drive through and get a double cheeseburger and just take the bread off because I'm very busy. Uh -huh. I'm very, very busy and rushed, and I just have to grab and go something. And clearly, I can get through an entire day and wait for the right thing. Yeah. This, this challenge is really teaching me a lot about myself and we have gotten a lot of comments is like you're eating too much you're no way you're gonna lose weight and uh you're supposed to intermittent fast well the whole point to this when we talked to dr barry was if you eat the right foods yeah you don't have to do any of that stuff i think that whatever you try to do somebody's not going to agree with it right you know whatever your goal is so our goal was to only eat these four things right for 25 days or between the conference right and there's going to be some people that are like okay great i support you whether i go with you on this journey or not mm -hmm. i support you and i think there's always going to be somebody that's like no stop doing that don't do that right terrible yeah and we want to make it clear we're not making this like a permanent eating lifestyle no we're definitely going to incorporate a lot more meat in our diet i think and just limit some of the other stuff i'm going to put cheese in its place i think for me i'm going to be putting sweeteners in their place yeah. because i definitely felt like i could not have a beverage that did not have a flavor to it besides water and i am clearly capable of drinking black coffee and water i can do this i don't know i miss my zevia i definitely miss my redmond relight i will be drinking them again i will be having keto chow again and i keto chow didn't rule my life you know i mean we enjoy our keto chow ice cream i enjoy keto chow on like days like sundays mm -hmm. but again i think like the thing that really ruled my life was just snacking on a lot of snacks instead of having like one every few days it was an everyday thing and it was like a small breakfast but not really something substantial and then you know, when I would look at the cheese, the cheese was just every time I walked past the refrigerator. Honestly, there's just such a piece that settled in my heart dealing with some of my food insecurity. Right. The fact that it's like, Rachel, it's okay. There's, there's more food. If you really are genuinely hungry, go back and get some more of the right food. And I think just knowing that yeah. has changed my relationship with food. And I was thinking today that when we lost all of our weight on keto at the beginning we were eating a lot more we were yeah. eating a lot more and we were eating like things like our taco pie and we were eating mug cakes and we were eating keto ice cream both store-bought and stuff that we made and we were losing weight and we felt good and somewhere we hit our goal weight yes and we were so concerned that we were going to put the weight back on that we started limiting our food intake and we started cutting calories and we started cutting fat and started cutting stuff. And somewhere in there, we got more food insecurity. And I'm seeing now that I really believe that we could add some keto chow ice cream and some other things back in and eat two or three meals throughout the day and still be able to maintain our weight because I think we started under eating so much that we just screwed our metabolism up just like we did before we did keto. I think that we fell into the trap that a lot of people do and that is thinking 
that you know that there's some sort of utopia on the other end of a goal you right. know that that somehow when the shirt size is a smaller size tag problems obstacles frustrations stress anxiety is just gone like right. you're not gonna have any problems if you're yeah. in a size small t-shirt and and that's just not true yeah there there's eating disorders there's eating insecurity there's food insecurity there there's stress on the other side you just you have to constantly be just just working with yourself right yeah so it'll be interesting at the end of this when we add other food back in to continue to eat when we're hungry right even if it is including a little bit of cheese or something like that because i really the more i look at it I think we just screwed our metabolism up completely again because of like insecurity of, oh my gosh, I'm finally skinny for the first time in my life and I never want to go back there. And now I'm going to do what like I would thought before, which is just eat a little bit of food. Well, and I think too, you set these goals that are like, like a three month or six month goal. And you're thinking to yourself, it'll be fine if I only check in with my body and my thoughts and where I'm at emotionally every three, six months. Like right. if you had a relationship with a person, you're like, I'm only going to call that person every three months or every right. six months. I mean, are you really checking in with them? Are you really, you know, caring about their emotions? Like, I think I need to check in with myself more regularly. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to wrap this up. Here's what we're going to finish the night with. Bacon. We've got some ground beef that I just cooked on the Blackstone. Literally just some ground beef with some Redmond seasoning. We have a hard-boiled egg right there. And a couple of strips of floppy bacon. Because I cooked it on the Blackstone. I didn't want to overcook it. I think I was going to heat it in the microwave. And it just didn't heat the way I normally like it to eat. It's, n it's not snotty, though. So I'm It's not super out. snotty. Also, I have my share of the pork rinds, which I'm probably going to use as like a scoop for the uh, ground beef. I ate my half on the way here. <laughs> well, that is going to be today's episode, which is day 15 of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Tomorrow, I'm going to try to get together all the data on how much we spent last week. Yeah. I'll try to give you that all in the vlog. I got to put it all in like a little spreadsheet kind of form so we can easily go over it. Uh, now let us know down below, how are you doing on beef, butter, bacon, and egg, if you are doing it? If you're not doing it, are you considering doing it? Are you doing something to help yourself get back in tune with your body? Let us know down in the comment section. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, check out some of the other videos that we have linked right over here. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm going to put right over there whether you head this way or you head this way don't forget to head this way subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it till tomorrow bye, bye.